So this is a slightly unusual operation. Our next, uh, our next mission in the campaign was to assault Oria Castro Castle, which was a heritage site, a historic building. And we realised that a friend of ours is one of the UK's foremost experts on the protection of cultural property in armed conflict. So we asked her to give us some guidelines for limitations that we should impose on ourselves to comply with the Hague Convention. And this is what happened. <laughs> What's the sit down there we go. I can't remember how I sit down. This could be a long briefing because Nick's got to read his legal target. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of insertion, we're, it's going to be a paradrop operation. We're going to paradrop into an agreed LZ in the area. We're going to drop in a medical vehicle to provide equipment and resupply. In terms of other complications, it is a site of special historic interest, which means we cannot just pound it flat with JDAM. I will turn over to Nick to discuss what he has learned from our academics on the subject. Okay, well, here we go. The majority of the laws around cultural property are about ensuring that you don't get to the point where you're fighting inside it. If you reach that point, because it will offer a concrete military advantage that be gained no other way, then the law accepts that, although it has to be authorised by a senior commander. However, you can still suffer major reputational damage in In addition, you are legally obliged to tell your opponent you're coming to allow them to what? vacate the property so it doesn't get damaged and or let them put in protective measures. Can we shout as we're parachuting? We need to give I... them time to prepare. In addition, in your CP pre-deployment briefing, you were informed of the recent findings of Dr. Moll, who has been conducting ballistic tests on stonework. Her work has established that even modern bullets will hit with high enough impact to cause significant subsurface fracture damage to historic stonework, which will result in vastly increased weathering, cracking and deterioration, <laughs> requiring extremely expensive major long-term repairs. The decision to attack was authorised by your battalion commander. He informs you that given the location of the fort, he doesn't want anything flashy or which will draw significant attention to the fort. As far as possible, he wants to minimise civilian attention. Briefing ends. So the problems I see here is, one, we have to tell them that we're coming. This is annoying, but doable. The second part <laughs> is that we can't use guns, are we serious? <laughs> now, the main issue here is that I know that the, uh, the ambulance will land safely because I've practiced this already. I have no idea what happens if it's crew where it lands. Okay, in honour of our patron for this, for this encounter, <laughs> Target drop will be drop zone Emma at 0635-2165. Yeah, this, this is definitely a Kelly's Heroes operation, everyone. <coughs> okay, plugged in. Okay, engines on. Rolling. Eyes on the ambulance, it's falling a long way short of the drop point, over. We're also pointing straight down, when does the, am when does the parachute come on? Parachute is on. Your chutes have opened but you've been caught by the wind. We are safely down, we are safely down. Nick is down. I sure do. Okay, next in. How was the parachute experience going? It was fun! Enjoyed yeah. that! It was Inside pretty windy. Yeah. Inside oh. the map, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Although we did forget to quote aliens. <laughs> 
there should be another screening hill 313, which will let us get a line of sight. Okay, that's the castle in front of us, isn't it? Yep. So, so we're we'll parking here. Yep. Yep. Alright, I'm jumping out. Yep. That's it. Right, okay, so I have eyes on one type EI in the main tower. Use your radio, please, out. Right, okay, so I have eyes on one times EI in the main tower. Scene. Okay. I have eyes on one main battle tank. Yeah. Say again, what? Possibly T-55 or T-72. Oh yeah, hang on a second. <clears throat> Russian forces. This is Sunray British Armed Forces broadcasting in the clear at Oriya Castro Castle. Be aware you are violating the laws of war by, by occupying a site of cultural protection. Please evacuate the facility as soon as possible to engage in armed conflict. Out. Okay, I have an EI patrol moving right to left out of the castle's main gate and down the hill, over. Looks like they heard me. Alright, all call signs. Javelin is going to fire on the Quran and we're going to push the hill in front of us, okay? Javelin is locked and ready to fire, over. Alright, we're going to push, once the jab goes, we're going to push and if we need to, the sniper then can give us covering fire as we engage the EI patrol. Jab, launch. Move. Step away. Fire. It's the sniper on the roof, I can see the reports. Sniper, can you try and take him out, please out. Working on it. We're at extreme range for SMGs. Yeah. I'm gonna run up that structure. Tiger scene. Second um, infantryman seen in a uh, turret and main tower, possibly a second sniper. Over. Where's that tiger? Over. Window. Over. Uh, to the south of the former MBT, uh, pushing into. He seems to be intent upon driving up to the wreck. Roger. I've got AT forward. It's either rock to rock or left round the um, ridge line. Um, the problem is, if we go on the left hand side, we may get shot out from Oreo Castro. But Fair. I think we'll just have to risk it. Okay. All right. Wait, vehicle oh. moving on the skyline. Yeah. Oh, see. Can you hit it? Uh, lining up. If it stops, yes. No, it's going over the bridge. Yep. All right. That's okay. If it stops and starts hosing us, it gets a rocket. But... Yeah. All right. All right, where's the next good cover? We're going to have to go along the bridge line. Yep. Crawling. White smoke out. Okay, let's get back in the fight. 
Oh, the rain is uh, so horribly atmospheric. And there I am, looking miserable in my pants. Better put some clothes on <clears throat> and get back in the fight. Now, you may notice there's no background noise at this point. It turns out that when I pulled the USB connection out of my microphone, it defaulted my sound system uh, settings back to uh, speakers. And so OBS stopped recording uh, sound, so I'll have to voice over. There is a naughty APC on the hilltop presumably has been giving the guys some trouble while I've been away. So I go for a, an excessively long-ranged Eilor shot. And I don't think I set the range up right. There we go. And it falls just short. So I'm pretty sure that missed. Yeah, it looks intact. <clears throat> so an AT shot and missed. I'm going to go back for another one out. Oh, we've skipped that bit. I've got an end law coming back up to this little hut and now we enter the the phase of this i like to think of as nick just gets shot an unnatural number of times uh, there's a couple of guys uh, a couple of russians coming towards me so with my dinky little smg i start taking some pot shots and they get shot i'm not sure how i didn't think they had line of sight but on goes the first of many bandages and i lose consciousness again regain consciousness Shortly on will go the second of many bandages. Now, in retrospect, I, at the time I didn't understand how I was getting wounded so many times. Um, in retrospect, I think I must have been taking fire from one of the flanks, from someone I never saw, possibly from Oricastro town itself, which is way over in front of me now. Um, occasionally on watching back, I'll see bullets skipping off things nearby. Uh, but at the time, I didn't notice. There is a Russian about to do something very silly and come around the corner. These SMGs might be useless at the long ranges, but oh, and I'm shot again. Um, I don't know how many times I got shot during this phase, but it was an awful lot. Oh, it's a miracle I didn't die. Yeah, so that was the kind of range these SMGs are quite good at, and not the 300 plus meters we've been engaging at. But I have an idea. Okay, I think my location is clear out. We are extreme range for SMGs. I mean, or we could take these machine guns from the uh, fallen Russians. Roger, I'm going to steal a, mach a machine gun and use it away from the castle out. Yeah, so that's my promise. Um, we weren't allowed to use high velocity ammunition at the stonework. Uh, the machine gun, I think is a 7.62. Um, John, I'm just to your right So you. I'm going to be very careful not to fire it at anything back with stonework. So we need to move up. We're still quite a long way from the castle. John, still with an SMG, throws smoke, starts to run up. And I will get up to follow him. Moving from cover to cover. Again, reasonably good cover between me and the castle. Stopping to steal ammunition from someone on the ground. They all have machine guns. Noted, I'm go. stealing their ammunition the out. Next piece of cover. Nice solid rock. From rock to the next rock. And I get shot again. I'm hit. I'm not used to getting shot this many times. Thank you. I appreciate that we are assaulting a fixed position over open ground um, with short range weapons that meant we had to really push close. And we don't have the the, the mortar or air support which we'd usually be using Is that BMP uh, def in this kind of situation. But I was starting to wonder if there was something wrong. So stop to search this guy, and he's got a pistol. I realise we're getting close to the castle. I might need a short-range weapon, and I forgot to put my SMG in my backpack. So I've looted him for a pistol, and up we move. And finally, into the castle itself. Now, at this I've point, I've got stun grenades over. There was a ten-minute firefight that I've edited out here because it was when my machine had crashed. Okay, John, stun grenades so, going in. Oh shit, bounced, bounced. I'm totally going to blame that on the bad old stonework and not on the fact I'm a terrible shot with a grenade. So we start moving through the castle with 9mm ammunition, um, expecting to run into resistance all the time, and th by this point there just wasn't any. Um, it looks like the Russian forces hadn't uh, mostly occupied the castle. They'd come out to fight and relied on armour. So we move through, and it's... Um, 
surprisingly, surprisingly easy going. Sweep and clear. That's oh, there is Contact somebody. South There's a sniper. sniper. Because everybody in this castle was either a machine gunner or a sniper. That's what happens if you tell people that you're coming. Luckily, he wasn't He's standing down. in front of any stonework, so I didn't feel bad about pulling out the RPK. But it looked like he wasn't the only guy over there, so I'm going to set up a, an Overwatch position to cover that approach. It's a nice narrow approach. It is. While well, the rest of the team uh, clears the building around behind me. So there's a bit of activity over there. Looks like they were moving round below the battlements. I hear an engine noise. Somebody's over. put out um, blue smoke below us to mark their position, and and they saw me and they shot me in the face. I'm awake. So yep. I've lost count of how many times okay, I've, I'm I've all right, but I've just shot down lost the Um Ah, and there's another one. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many times I got shot, but it was so many that I, I just plain ran out of medical supplies here. I have lost a lot of blood. I'm not surprised. Okay, I'm hit pretty bad and I'm out of supplies. Frankly, it's a miracle that this guy is still alive. But there we've done it. We've captured the, um, we've captured the objective, which means we'd taken it down to um, uh, a small enough remaining force that they felt overwhelmed and would surrender. And there at the end we found some culture. So, well, I mean, my takeaway from this was stop getting shot this much. But um, the point of this was supposed to be uh, playing with the limitations that the Hague Convention imposes. And they make it really hard. Going in with low velocity, low powered weapons, warning the, the enemy that we were coming, um, which meant that we had to assault over, over open ground without support, without explosives. Um, without artillery or air um, meant that we took an awful lot of casualties. We, I don't think we actually lost anyone, but by rights we probably should have. So there's that military necessity versus cultural protection balance to strike, and I think we were probably too generous. But the main thing is op success.